I'd like to show you the molecular structure of fats. You see, when you understand the molecular structure of fats, then you begin to understand how the body uses it. You begin to understand why the body uses it in that way. So you will never again be swayed by popular opinion on should we eat fats? What are the best fats? What are the bad fats? That was Barbara O'Neill, a naturopath and health educator dedicated to promoting natural ways to achieve optimal health. Today, we're going to talk about a crucial topic in nutrition, the importance of eating different types of fats. Let's listen to Barbara talk about our first fat. I'm going to begin by showing you the omega-3 fatty acid. Omega-3 is a fat that we hear a lot of and the reason for that is is that it's an essential fatty acid. You might often see it written like this, EFA, essential fatty acid. What essential means is that the body cannot make it, you have to put it in. Whenever you read the word essential, that's what it means. And what are we told is the highest source of omega-3? Fish? And yet no creature can put omega-3 into their fatty acid chain, only plants can. So why are fish so high? Because fish are eating a one-celled algae that is high. So you can do superior to fish oil. You can get your omega-3 by foods, by plant foods. Flaxseed is the highest source of omega-3. Flaxseed and linseed are basically the same thing. Chia seed is the second highest source of omega-3. So those are good. Plant sources of omega-3s. What makes omega-3 important? What I'd like to show you now is why it is so important in the body. Omega-3 is, is an 18 chain fatty acid. This is the molecular structure of omega-3. There are 19 trillion of these in one drop of oil. So that's the magnification that we're looking at. Notice that there are hydrogen atoms either side and right in the middle, they are linked together by carbon atoms. What the three means, that at the third carbon atom, there's a double bond. So let's count this. One, two, three. The double, bond, the double bond means that instead of one link, there are two links. And whenever you get a double bond, these hydrogen atoms go and the hydrogen atoms underneath develop an electromagnetic field between them. As a result, they start to repel each other and that causes a kink in the chain because of this repelling action. In omega-3, or the omega-3 found in flaxseed and linseed, there are three double bonds. So one, two, three, we've got another one there. One, two, three, and we have another one there. So these double bonds are gone. These hydrogen atoms are gone. And the electromagnetic field is happening underneath. This causes three kinks in the chain. Number two kink, number three kink. Causing the, ch causing the oil to be a very fluid oil. It's a very thin oil because of its three double bonds. What do they paint cricket bats with? With, flat, with linseed oil because it disperses so easily. So when you eat this oil, it causes the blood to thin. It disperses on the skin. It's a lovely oil to take via mouth so you get nice supple skin. The body loves using this omega-3 for cell membrane function and repair. So the, the name given to this oil is a polyunsaturated fatty acid. Poly meaning more than one double bond. Unsaturated because there are three empty spots on the fatty acid chain. Let's have a look at the effect of the double bonds in the body. They create an electro they create an electromagnetic field. That's important for us because we are electrical people. There's a spark of electricity in every cell of the body. And specifically, our electrical system is our nervous system. So it's a great brain food. 
Double bonds are also light sensitive. That means the light is attracted into these empty spots. Those empty spots are also heat sensitive. The heat is attracted in. And they also act like a magnet to oxygen. What this means is that when we eat these oils, our electromagnetic field is insured. We absorb more light, more vitamin D. We're able to manage our heat better in our body and we're getting more oxygen. Remember the most vital element needed for life? Cancer cannot live in the presence of oxygen. What an amazing oil. In, some, in fact, some writers have called this a super polyunsaturated fatty acid. The body uses omega-3 for the starting point in the anti-inflammatory cascade. So it's a powerful anti-inflammatory. How about the next fat source? What about sunflower? <clears throat> sunflower contains omega-6 fatty acids. It is also an 18 chain fatty acid, but the six indicates the position on the fatty acid chain of the first double bond. One, two, three, four, five, six. There's its first double bond. And there are two double bonds in this fatty acid chain. Here's another one here. So we've got hydrogen atoms along here, hydrogen here, hydrogen atoms along here, and all along the bottom. And we've got two repelling actions here, always under the double bond. So that means we have two kinks in this fatty acid chain. It's not as thin an oil, but it is still quite a thin oil. This is also given the name polyunsaturated fatty acid. Poly meaning more than one double bond. Unsaturated because there's still empty spots on the fatty acid chain. How about the next fat source? What about olive and almond oil? They are high in omega-9. Nine indicating the position on the fatty acid chain of the first double bond. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. There's our double bond there. And there is only one double bond in olive oil and almond oil. So you've got your hydrogen atoms along here and along here and also along this area here. We've got one repelling action. So there's only one kink in olive oil, almond oil. As a result, this oil is called a mono unsaturated fatty acid. Mono, mean, mono meaning one double bond, unsaturated because there is still an empty spot on the fatty acid chain. And the final oil? What about coconut? Coconut oil, instead of being a long chain fatty acid, like these three 18 chain fatty acids, coconut contains short and medium chain fatty acids. I have drawn a 10, 10 chain fatty acid here, which is considered a short chain fatty acid. There are no double bonds in coconut. So every spot is full. And in the cold weather, it's a solid fat. So this fat is called a saturated fat. Saturated because there are no double bonds. So which oil do we use? So what is the best oil? Well, which body function are you talking about? Because our body uses them all and it needs them all. I'll give you a simple illustration to give you an idea of this. I used to work in an operating theatre. And in the operating theatre, we had a core team. We had our surgeon, we had our, and we'll call our surgeon three double bonds. We had our assisting physician, there's two double bonds. We had our theatre nurse, one double bond. And we had our trolley boy, no double bond. Our trolley boy's name was Fred and he was a very stocky, strong young man of about 35. He was very good at his job. He could lift the patients with ease. He was so strong. He was very good at scrubbing out infected theatres. We enjoyed Fred because he did his job well, but there was just one area where we were constantly trying to refine Fred. 
When it was time to take the patient into recovery, I would say to Fred, Fred, it is time to wheel the patient in recovery. And he'd say, fine. And he'd start wheeling it, but he would bang the trolley against the door. He would bang it. And we were constantly saying, Fred, gentle, gentle. And he was gentle. You know, he had a job to do and he just did it. Now, if the surgeon didn't turn up, would we put Fred on the job of surgery? No, no, no. And if Fred didn't turn up one day, would we put the surgeon on Fred's job? No, no, no. The surgeon had beautiful hands and we don't want to hurt the hands. Can you see my illustration? In the operating theatre, every member of the team was vital and actually we could not function if any of them were not there. And it is exactly the same with these oils in the human body. Every oil has its function. The body loves using omega-3 for cell membrane function and repair. Barbara will now go into more depth about omega-3 South. Let me show you the omega-3 family. The omega-3 that is found in flaxseed, linseed, is called alpha-linolenic acid. Alpha-linolenic acid has three double bonds. And we've already seen that's quite a fluid oil. In the body, it's broken down to EPA. In the body, ALA is broken down to EPA. EPA has five double bonds. In the body, EPA is broken down to DHA. And DHA has six double bonds. So you can see how fluid these, these other oils are, incredibly fluid. And the body loves using DHA for cell membrane function and repair. In the fish, the fish eats ALA in the one-celled algae. In the fish, ALA is converted to EPA. In the fish, EPA is converted to DHA. And then man extracts DHA and says, ah, this is superior because the DHA that the cell uses is already available for you. You don't have to wait for the body to convert this to this to this. But if three double bonds is sensitive to light, heat and oxygen, how sensitive is six double bonds? And I question the ability to extract the DHA and not have it exposed to light, heat and oxygen and thus destroyed. And the fish that are the highest in DHA are also the highest in mercury. And of course the DHA being a fat is found in the fat. And so I believe it is much safer and much easier just to get your omega-3s from the flax seed or the chia seed. Our waterways and our seas are very polluted today and it's difficult to get fish oil that is not contaminated. How does the body use each of these oils? So what is the best oil? Your body uses them for different functions. Your body loves your using the omega-3 for cell membrane function and repair. Omega-6 and omega-9 are used as side issues, whereas the body loves burning coconut oil as fuel. Let me show you. Let's go to the gastrointestinal tract. Here is mouth. Here is your esophagus. Here is stomach. Here is liver. Here is gallbladder bile duct comes down and bile duct connects with the neck of the pancreas and here is your duodenum the first part of the small intestine there's pyloric sphincter the duodenum is lined with little villi let me magnify the villi up in the middle of the villi is the lacteal this is part of the lymphatic system and over the villi is a blood capillary network. Do you remember I said to you the other day, anything that goes in our gastrointestinal tract is not part of you or me till it gets broken down to tiny substances then absorbed into the blood. 
Let me show you now what happens with the three long chain fatty acids. They come into the mouth, they are not dealt with in the mouth. They come into the stomach, they are not dealt with in the stomach. They come into the duodenum, bile from the gallbladder emulsifies it or breaks it down into tiny little particles. Then pancreatic lipase further breaks it down to glycerol and fatty acids and then it is absorbed through the brush border around the lacteal going straight to the through the brush border around the villi and into the lacteal. So there's your lacteal there. The lymphatic system takes it to the liver. The liver sees these three long chain fatty acids and says the surgeons have appeared. Store them keeping them for cell membrane function and repair. And for coconut oil? This is not what happens with the coconut oil with its short and medium chain fatty acids. It comes into the mouth and underneath the tongue are sublingual glands that release lingual lipase. Lingual lipase is an enzyme that breaks down only short and medium chain fatty acids. So the coconut is unique in that the breakdown happens in the mouth. The breakdown having already begun, it comes into the stomach, breakdown's already happening. Comes into the duodenum, does not need bile, does not need pancreatic lipase. Is taken through the lining of the gut straight into the blood. The coconut oil is the only one that gets taken through to the blood. Taken to the liver, burnt as fuel. It's an amazing oil. So it is burnt as fuel immediately. No other oil is like that. So if someone wanted to eat an oil that the body burnt, what would they eat? <laughs> the coconut. So this is the best waste loss oil because the body does not store it. The body burns it as fuel. Now, if someone's going to drink huge amounts of coconut oil, maybe the body will be forced to store it because so much is coming in. Whereas the body stores these long chain fatty acids. And yet we have been told for so long, if you want to lose weight, you must stop the coconut. It's a saturated fat. Saturated fats have got a bad name, and yet they do not deserve that bad name. It can be like the farmer who got a whole lot of coconuts cheap. He gave them to his cows to fatten them up. The cows lost fat, put on muscles, started bounding around the paddocks. Mm. So if you want to lose weight, put on muscle and bound around the paddocks, what all do you eat? The coconut. What else about coconut oil? Coconut has a few fatty acids. One is lauric acid. And lauric acid is found in coconut, 48%. There's only one other food that has lauric acid. It's a strong antimicrobial fatty acid. Butter has 2%. That's the only other food that has it. Actually, breast milk has it too. They say breast, breastfed babies are smarter because breast milk contains omega-3, omega-6, omega-9, saturated fats. It's an excellent fuel for babies, the best. Can't be equaled, actually. Coconut is also 40% antifungal. It's because of its other fatty acids as well as the lauric acid. It has cap caprylic acid and capri acid. It's an excellent oil. An excellent oil or cream or milk for people who have pancreatic problems or liver problems because it bypasses the need for bile and it bypasses the need for pancreatic lipase. And if you go into the supermarket and go to where they sell the baby formulas, the milk formulas, you will find in ne nearly every milk formula there will be either coconut oil or palm oil. And they add that to baby food because it's so easy to absorb, does not need the bile and does not need the pancreatic lipase.
Barbara will now tell us a little about Dr. Bruce Fife and his books. Dr. Bruce Fife has written several books on the wonders of the coconut oil. One's called Coconut Cures, one's called The Miracle Oil Coconut Oil, one's called Oil Pulling. His two most recent books are Stop Autism Now and Stop Alzheimer's Now. Excellent books. And they are both books on neuro um, degeneration and neuroinflammation. Stop Autism Now is probably more about children, whereas Stop Alzheimer's Now is more about adults and all cases of neurodegenerations. And he uses the coconut oil. There is one chapter in both those books that's called The Ketone Miracle. And he gives the story of how in about 1920, a group of doctors were putting their patients on strict fasting to cure epilepsy. And it did. You see, in fasting, the fat cells are getting broken down to release energy and they release something called ketones, which can be used as fuel. But ketones are neuroprotective and they're neurohealers. So what these doctors found is that they were getting phenomenal results with this fasting, but of course a person must eat. So they decided to try a diet that mimicked the fasting, which was a very high fat diet. So they basically stopped all carbohydrates, they ate very few vegetables, high meat, high fat diet. And, and the same thing happened, it's called the ketogenic diet. The people did not return to their epilepsy, but a very, very difficult meal to eat because of the high fat. And uh, Dr. Bruce Fife, in his book, he calls it the coconut ketogenic diet, where he basically suggests doing what I've been advising here, drop the carbohydrates right down, increase the fiber with your vegetables, good amounts of protein, and he uses animal protein, but I suggest the vegetable protein. And he says begin by having one teaspoon of coconut oil three times a day, even build that up to a dessert spoon of coconut oil three times a day. Some people even getting up to a tablespoon of coconut oil three times a day. With this excess coconut oil going in the body, the liver converts this medium chain fatty acids to ketones. And ketones, as I told you, are neuroprotectors and they are neurohealers. Now let's hear from Barbara about a movie from the 1990s. There was a movie made I think in the 90s called First Do No Harm. It has Meryl Streep in it and it's a true story about a, a mother whose child got epilepsy they were, of course, rushed him to hospital, tried different medications. Some medications sent this child like a mad boy, <laughs> jumping off buildings, all sorts of things. So they changed his medication. Now he just turned into a zombie. And uh, they were beginning to talk about cutting the top of his head off to do some tests on it. So. The mother was terrified, as you can imagine. The child was only about seven, so she went to the library and she researched and she researched and she researched and she found the ketogenic diet. And it was done at John Hopkins Hospital. I think it is still done there. And so, to cut a long short story short, she got her son there. They, they immediately fasted this little boy for two days. Do you know that was not a worry because the medication he was on, he just didn't want to eat. They fasted him for two days, then he put him on the ketogenic diet, which was um, high fat, you know, he was eating bacon and eggs, <laughs> and some meals were like mince, but a little bit of tomato, a little bit of lettuce. I think in the first week, he went from something like 10, 10 seizures a day to, uh, to about three in the week. I can't remember the exact timelines, but you can read it in uh, Stop Autism Now and you can see it in the, in the movie, First Do No Harm. But I think it only took a matter of months and this child was no seizures at all. 
and years later still no seizures. Now they told the parents that he would eventually have mental retardation because of the amount of fits that he was having. And he got to the point where he's the top of his class in school. Wow, just incredible story. And that's why the chapter in the book is called The Ketone Miracle. Just incredible. And Bruce Fife says, you can get a far more acceptable dietary program by just dropping your carbs, having the vegetables, the proteins, and supplementing with the coconut oil. In Stop Alzheimer's Now, he has equally amazing stories of people who've been having turnarounds with Alzheimer's, dementia, multiple sclerosis, Huntington's career, Parkinson's disease. So it's, I think every home should have that book because I don't know anyone who wants Alzheimer's. And he shows in this book that you can prevent damage to the brain cells, but you can also, by implementing the coconut oil, begin to have a healing taking place. The other day I told you that every membrane around the cell, every cell has a membrane around it and that membrane is 50% protein, 50% fat, except for the brain cell, 70% fat. So that gives you a little bit of an idea on why the fat is so important in brain health. Let's listen to Barbara tell us about the two oils which have been used the longest. 100 years ago and before, human beings got their polyunsaturated fats from the food that they ate. There's only been two oils that have been used since time dot, and that is the olive oil and the coconut oil. And both of these oils can be extracted from the flesh of the plant, so they're extracted very easily. Women used to have presses in their kitchen and they could just extract the olive oil very easily. They found that if they put the olive oil in a glass bowl on the bench, it would get a bitter taste. Now we know it's because the light, heat and oxygen were attracted into that empty spot and it would cause the, uh, the oil to go rancid. And so they quickly learnt that if they put the oil in, um, in clay, clay jars with cork tops in the basement and kept it cool, it retained its nice sweet flavour. It didn't go bitter. Barbara will tell us some more characteristics about these two oils. Both of these oils have been extracted in a very simple methods by women in their kitchens for centuries. And as you see by the molecular structure of these oils, they are the most stable oil. Coconut is the most stable. Olive oil is not as stable. It does have one double bond, so you should always buy it in um, tins or dark jars because it does deteriorate when exposed to light, heat and oxygen. But all of these oils really, I believe we should be getting them from our food. How is the oil extracted from these plants? Olive oil and coconut oil have been used for centuries and can be extracted very simply with the cold pressed method. You can get oils from these seeds now and in the majority of cases they're extracted with chemicals and high heat which always destroys the double bonds. So when you do buy olive oil very important that you buy first cold pressed extra virgin olive oil and you can get some very nice Australian olive oils now. You can't always believe what the label says when you get your oils from Greece and Italy. The standards are a little bit different but I myself I like to support local industry too in the Australian oils. Barbara will tell us about some of the medical uses of olive oil. Traditionally, olive oil and coconut oil have also been used medicinally. Olive oil has been used internally for upset stomachs, for constipation. There's also a recipe that's been used for centuries to expel gallstones. It's half a cup of olive oil, half a cup of lemon juice, drunk before bed. That amount of oil causes the gallbladder to start releasing huge amounts of bile and in the process the stones can be 
uh, also released. I do caution anyone who wants to try it, your best to use it with someone who knows what they're doing. Barbara will tell us about some of the medical uses of coconut oil. Coconut oil has been used traditionally too because of its potent antifungal properties. It's excellent in using for eczema, psoriasis. It also nourishes the, the, um, the skin very nicely. But as you can see by what I've shown you in this lecture, it's an excellent medicine for someone who has any uh, yeast problems and it is excellent medicine for people who have pancreatic or gallbladder problems because it bypasses them. Now Barbara will tell us more about where the plants from which these oils are extracted grow. Let's have a look at planet Earth, at where these oils grow. Here we have the tropics. Which oil is grown in the tropics? That would be the coconut, yeah? It's perfectly designed as a saturated fat in this hot climate. Because it has no double bonds, coconut is light resistant, heat resistant and oxygen resistant. It is the most stable oil, perfectly designed in those hot climates. If we go up the planet, we come to the Mediterranean. And of course, we know that your olives and your almonds are grown in the Mediterranean. So the Omega-9 is perfectly designed for this environment. If you go up the planet, this is what you'll find, that plants grown in these areas contain these oils. And they're perfectly designed for that environment. In his book, Fats That Heal, Fats That Kill, Udo Erasmus quotes research where they tested the fatty acids in a plant grown here, very high in omega-9. Same species of plant grown further up was higher in omega-6. Same species of plant grown up the top was higher in omega-3. In other words, we should be eating the foods that are grown in our area. Now we live on a wonderful part of the planet in Australia, we're about down here, so we can actually access a little bit of all of them. And of course, knowing what the different oils give you enables you to use those oils depending on different conditions in your body. Do you have recommendations on when to use the different oils? Anyone with neuroinflammation, they certainly might step up the coconut oil. Someone wants to thin their blood, the omega-3 is excellent for that and also for reducing inflammation. Udo Erasmus gave the story of a man who went to live with the Eskimos. And by the way, if you go into the Eskimos igloos, you'll hear a lot of laughter. They're sparky, even in those short winter days. Their electromagnetic fields working well. They absorb their light very well when they get it. They're able to manage their heat. The oxygen in the brain keeps them vitalized and invigorated. What are they eating huge amounts of? Fish, seal blubber, all extremely high in omega-3 because the plants, the seaweeds are very, very high. And so the fish are high and then the seal that eats the fish is high. And now Barbara will tell us a little about the source of a common disorder. But in the northern countries of the planet today, there's a mental disease spreading through called the SAD disease. It's seasonal affective disorder. You may have heard of it. They blame the lack of sunshine, but there's never been sun. Something else has come into the equation. And the problem is they're eating the SAD diet. Have you heard of the SAD diet? Standard Australian diet, standard American diet. That diet is usually very high in carbohydrates, high in animal and animal fat, very low in the omegas, usually quite low in vegetables with all your minerals. It's the SAD diet. I think God's got a sense of humor because the nut with the highest amount of omega-3 looks like a brain and of course that's your walnut. So we need to be eating a variety of all of these oils. 
because they are required, in fact, essential for proper body function. Remember, your health is the lock and we're here to provide the keys. Keep turning to Key Health for insights that unlock your full potential. The key to lifelong vitality is in your hands, it's just one bite away.